junior year, first day back from summer vacation. My hands shook as I walked through the door of room 208, Mr. Nam's classroom. As my advisor, he's the best. As my honors advanced pre-calc math teacher, let's just say I wasn't sure how I felt yet. I sat down, still on edge, thinking we'd be jumping straight into correcting the work that I'd struggled to complete over the summer, even though he said it should be easy review. But to my surprise, we did something different, although probably more scary. We mapped out the next two years in the two-year course. I was starting to debate dropping out while I was still ahead until he mentioned his most controversial idea, groups. If you've taken the class, I'm sure you have your own opinion on them. If not, I'll tell you mine. Each group consists of three to four students who meet outside of class to help each other with homework and studying. On test, we all receive two separate grades, a personal score and the actual grade that goes into the grade book, which consists of the personal score and group grade combined by Mr. Nam's special formula. Basically, if your group did well, it helped you. And if they did bad, it could drop your test by up to three points. I loved groups. It made my classmates study with me. But you can see why some people like Yuto didn't. These groups were supposed to entice us to work together and teach us how to work with unlikely matches, as Mr. Nam called them. He wanted us to study with people who were both similar and different to us, who we'd get along but also fight with. So for the first night's homework, we took a variety of different personality tests. The main result that he cared about was from the 16 personality tests. When he saw my results, ugh, you're a feeler, was all he said. The category nature of the 16 personalities tests shows the trait that we use to make decisions and cope with emotions. The options are thinker and feeler. My test showed that I am 76% feeler. It was the category in which I was the farthest from neutral, which surprised me in the moment. I knew that a bunch of true or false questions on a website couldn't know me, but it did get me thinking. If this test was right, then do my feeler ways affect my everyday life? Over the past two years, I've decided that the answer to this is a resounding yes. I make a lot of decisions based on how I feel in a given moment. Let's take a super easy example, like getting dressed in the morning. Most people just grab whatever's on the first hanger they pull, but I have a whole process. The outfit has to fit my mood. Sometimes I pick it out the night before and then decide that it doesn't feel right that morning. I'm sure the girls on the second floor of Het West would have a lot to say about this, since many days I end up searching through their closets between periods after something good or bad happened that changed my vibe. I go to Abby's for short Levi's and shoes, and Lids always has cute skirts. Shay's closet is the best place to find a perfect spring skirt or revenge jeans, and Ryan and Isabel pretend to be my personal stylist almost every night. Most of the time, making decisions based on my emotions helps me since it means doing the best that I can for the way that I feel at a given time. But sometimes it leads me to make some pretty irrational spur of the moment decisions, like trying to escape from the health center to row within 102 fever. After learning that I'm a feeler, I've also spent extra time to reflect on the way that I feel emotions themselves. I feel everything to the absolute fullest. Yes, sometimes I have mixed emotions, just like anyone else, but Unlike everyone, when I feel a certain way, it takes over with great force. Let me give you some examples. When I'm happy, I radiate positivity. I cannot stop a smile from spreading across my face. It's impossible. Happiness overtakes my body. It makes me feel light on my feet and propels my ponytail to sway from side to side as I walk. When I'm giggly, I can't stop laughing. I belly laugh, cackle, and snort like there's no tomorrow. It's pretty embarrassing. When I'm sad, the whole world looks darker. Everything takes more effort, even getting out of bed in the morning. My eyes feel heavy for days or even weeks until I find time to get out a good cry. When I'm angry, every fiber in my body sits tense. Behind my eyes, it's easy for anyone to see that my mind is racing. Thinking of comebacks, basically practicing a whole argument in my head in case it were to happen. My fists stay clenched and brows stay scowled until I can rant to my friends, advisor, or roommate. When I'm anxious, my hands shake. I unconsciously bite my nails down to the skin and feel itchy like spiders are crawling up and down my arms. 
I get nauseous and have night terrors. It's one feeling that's especially hard for me to shake. Over time, I've gotten better at stabilizing the negative emotions and embracing the positive ones. I can now identify them easier and react with more care and precision. It has taken a lot of time and self-reflection to get here, but it's been worth it because it allows me to take care of myself better. Now, when I'm happy, I embrace it. I live in the moment and savor it, taking snapshots that I can play over and over again in my head. When I'm sad, I try to take some time by myself. I press pause on my life, cope with what I need to deal with, and then resume back to where I was. I have built a trusted circle of friends and adults to rant to when I'm angry. I can always go to them when I need to get something off of my chest. And through therapy and the support of my circle, I've learned how to identify my anxiety and deal with it in healthier ways so that it doesn't feel so all-consuming. Another thing that I noticed about myself after taking the test was that it was easy for me to take on other people's emotions and confuse them with my own. When friends had a problem, I would often try too hard to solve it for them. Other people's issues kept me awake at night because I was being too empathetic. They say that empathy is putting yourself in someone else's shoes, but the thing is that most people know how to take those shoes off. For a long time, I didn't. I couldn't see it happening until Mr. Nam pointed it out to me one day in advisory. I was complaining about some problem I thought I was having, and he looked at me and said, why are you so upset? This does not affect you at all. I know that you care about your friends, but it's not your issue. You need to stop treating it like it is. He was right. I needed to stop treating it like it was. I thought that I could take some of other people's burdens off of their shoulders by putting them onto mine. But in reality, I wasn't taking anything from anyone. I was only hurting myself. By separating my own life from those of the people around me, I have found more time to feel what I need to feel. I have worked and am still working on striking a balance between being there for friends and for myself, but I like to think that I'm getting better at it. I know that I'm still not perfect. Sometimes I flash a super disrespectful face at someone without even knowing it, make <laughs> an irrational spur of the moment decision because I'm mad, keep sadness or nerves bottled up for days, or feel someone else's feelings for them. But learning about my emotions, their effects on my decision-making, and the way that they make me feel has taught me so much about myself. Freshman year, someone gave me a really good piece of advice. They said, when you feel a certain way, you don't always have to act on it or try to change it. Sometimes, observing is enough. A piece I like to tack onto this is that emotions are only emotions. So be happy. Be sad, feel what you need to feel, but know that the emotion you're feeling in a given moment does not define the person that you are. And if you're a feeler like me, don't be afraid to let it consume you sometimes. Soak up every moment, good or bad, because they're all important parts of life. And if you're a feeler like me, know that despite what Mr. Nam may say, you are just as important as the thinkers. Looking back, I am certain I brought something to my math group, some knowledge, some candy, a bunch of questions, and a whole lot of feelings. Thank you.